Modern Warfare has been out for almost a week now, and today I wanted to make a video and focus on a full try-hard guide. This is for those people who really want to get the most out of their game and get a leg up on their opponents. It is primarily aimed at PC, but there are some settings in here that apply to console too. First of all, graphic settings. Of course, you want this in full screen and you want your maximum refresh rate, ideally 120 hertz or above for a fast FPS like this if your monitor supports it. Your render resolution should be on 100 unless you're really struggling for performance and you can reduce it. You'll also want to disable VSync in this screen. If you want to cap your FPS, COD also allows you to do that in a number of ways. You can set a completely custom limit while in game and also a frame rate limit from the menu and even the out of focus frame rate. I like to set this to unlimited. There's tests out there that show the more frame rate you have, the less input lag you have. As for advanced stuff, well, there isn't really one single graphic setting that would be deemed a performance killer. No one setting that when turned off will magically improve your frame rate. The good thing though, is that the game runs well out of the bag anyway, but there are a few settings you may want to think about turning down first if you're struggling for performance and want to improve your overall visibility. Ambient occlusion and anti-aliasing are the two that you want to reduce first and maybe turn off. So try putting ambient occlusion to MDAO or even completely off. The same with anti-aliasing. Reduce it or turn it off if you really need to. Turning AA off can make the game look a bit sharper and less blurry, easier for visibility. The rest of the settings can be tweaked bit by bit if you need the extra gains. It's worth noting that screen space reflections will add visual noise if you've turned anti-aliasing all the way off. So if you have, this needs to be off too. Of course, if you're going full try hard mode and you don't care about graphics, just turn all the settings to low or medium. That's the easiest way to get the best performance and visibility. Some settings that I would definitely recommend turning off though is all of the post-processing effects. Depth of field, film strength, world motion blur, weapon motion blur, and film grain. All of those will affect your visibility and performance, so turn them off to get the best experience. Next, audio settings, important. This one is quite tricky because so many of us have different audio setups right now, so it can be tough to find the right one for you. I've tried all of them so far, and the two that I would recommend are either midnight mode, which blends the audio together quite nicely, so you hear what you need to hear without everything else being really loud, and the boost mode, which can massively improve the sound of footsteps. I urge you to try out these settings for yourself so you can match it to your headset or TV, whatever audio setup you're using, but those two work the best for me. The juggernaut music is for the kill streak and the hit marker sound effects, that's personal preference, so you can change that to the old sound if you wish. In terms of in-game settings, much like with Black Ops 4, the new Modern Warfare has a great amount of customization and PC specific options. Starting with the keyboard and mouse, you can not only change your mouse sensitivity, but also your ADS sensitivity on low zoom and high zoom weapons. Of course, your choice of sensitivity is going to be specific to you, but in Call of Duty, I think you're better off going with a sensitivity on the higher end of the scale. So if you typically use lower to medium sensitivity in other games like Counter-Strike, Battlefield, Siege, consider turning it up a bit for Call of Duty. When it comes to aim down the sight sends, a lot of players reduce this so it's a touch slower when you're aiming, so it's easier to track players. You'll also notice an ADS setting that you can change between relative and legacy. Think of relative a lot like uniform soldier aiming in a game like Battlefield. It means that if you're using scopes with different zoom levels, such as one, two, or three, then the distance that you need to move your mouse is going to be the same for all of them. I prefer that because it means that my mouse sense is always the same. With legacy, it's going to depend on the zoom of your scope. This is also how it worked in previous titles, so this could be whatever you're used to. I prefer relative because I just think it's better to have a consistent sensitivity and it's also better for muscle memory. You can also set your ADS transition timing. So if you've got a standard sensitivity of 10, but your zoom sense is on say 50%, it's going to be 50% slower when you ADS and this setting will dictate when that change in sensitivity will happen either instant when you ADS, gradually during the animation, or after the gun has zoomed in. If it happens instantly, you'll have quite a big difference between your standard hip fire and your ADS speed. So it can be quite jarring. So I would suggest just playing around with this until you're happy. Typically what I like to do is make a private game versus bots and just mess around with these settings there. Of course on PC, I'd recommend turning off mouse acceleration, mouse filtering and mouse smoothing too. I know some people do play with these settings on, but for the most part, having them off will give you better muscle memory. 
make sure that enhanced pointer precision is turned off in your Windows mouse settings too. On PC, I'd also recommend making a small change to your key binds. Now, everyone uses different key binds. Some people have certain actions on their mouse, others have quite specific setups, so there's no way to give people the best key binds as there really is no one size fits all. There is a few changes that I would make though. On PC, Q is your tactical grenade, which is absolutely fine. F is use and G is your lethal grenade. E is actually not used by default. On most PC games, E is use, so it will open doors and do other basic inputs. And I'd recommend that you change use from F to E, and then you can have your lethal grenade on F rather than G. It's just a more comfortable key binding for me and you are going to be using it quite regularly. I'd also find a comfortable key binding for you to mount your gun. A mouse button is really good, it is mouse 5 by default or even caps lock if your fingers are flexible enough. Or if you'd rather under the weapons and equipment menu you can change this up even further. In this one you can dictate how the weapon mount works. You can have it on a keybind or on a double tap of aim down the sight or aim down the sight and your melee weapon, ADS and use, even disabled. You can really tweak this setting to get it exactly how you want. I'd also recommend changing up the switch weapon minimum delay. I put mine to zero. This reduces the minimum delay between being able to switch weapons twice. There are some occasions when you've just switched from a weapon and you'd want to switch back to it straight away, especially if you're using overkill and have two primary weapons. It does make changing weapons via the mouse wheel a bit more inconsistent though, so if you do use your mouse wheel to change weapons, then I would probably leave this setting alone. Moving on from the keybinds now and onto the general settings. First thing that you want to change in COD is your FOV. Pretty standard for most PC FPS games. How high that you go really depends on your personal preference and size of monitor, how close you are to it as well. I would suggest 85 to 90 or just above as having some extra vision in your periphery is really useful in this game. You can also set your ADS field of view here too and this dictates if your FOV changes when you aim down the sight or not. When you set it to independent, your field of view will change to the default value of the game when you aim down the sight. When you have it unaffected though, it will zoom to your actual FOV setting. It only applies to the lower zoom scopes as well, so 3.25 or lower. Depending on your base FOV setting, you may want the game to zoom in more when you're aiming down the sight, because it makes it easier to track targets, but likewise it can be quite jarring. In this menu, you can disable the introduction movie, which honestly more games should offer. It's a neat setting, and if we could just have games not load up the intro at maximum volume, that would be great too. This is also where you can find all of your accessibility options and your content filters, such as disabling the text chat, profanity, and gore effects. I typically disable most of this and the chat to just keep the screen as clear as possible. When it comes to telemetry, there is a ton of little UI elements that you can turn on or off if you want them, ranging from FPS to server latency and even your GPU temperature. There is one other setting worth knowing too, and that's the start shaders installation. You may be one of the few that haven't had any issues with the game, but for others there are a few instances of shaders reinstalling quite regularly and some performance problems. If you do get impacted, try coming to this menu and reinstalling your shaders and see if that fixes things and makes the game a bit smoother. Last of all, if you head to interface and audio, you can set the system key behavior to game mode instead of operating system. And all this does is when you're in game, it will ignore the windows key when the game's in focus. So if you're prone to hitting keys that you shouldn't when fumbling around trying to get those top plays, then this change will make accidentally alt tabbing out of the game and bringing up the windows menu a thing of the past. And I did mention this one in my tips video too, but you can disable crossplay from the account menu if it's not something that you want to ever do. Just worth knowing. And that's all for today, guys. The more I play Modern Warfare, the more that I've realized it's about positioning. Maybe more so than quick reaction times and decent aim. But I hope these settings do help you for performance and visibility. They should. I think the default settings in the game are quite good, but tweaking them like this can make a world of difference. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this guide. If you did, leave a like and potentially share it. If you feel like there's any settings or tips and tricks that I missed in here, let everyone know down in the comments below. I'm sure there's a load of stuff that I haven't mentioned, but as far as I know, this is what helps me out the most. If you didn't like it, dislike it, not a problem at all. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.